Hi everyone and welcome on this very exciting tutorial we're making together. I remind you once again that you can watch the introduction to this tutorial on the YouTube channel and here I'm just going to remind you what we have done so far. Uh, in the first video, using the software called Buju, we've been able to recreate into a virtual 3D space our real footage camera movement and even our real footage 3D environment as you can see here and we've been able to shoot some of these points just like this one here and we have exported them back in After Effects and we have used their 3D position to track some 3D text uh, in our real footage environment as you can see here on the floor plane or even on the background wall here but at the end of the first video we had this huge problem uh, that you can see here uh, the text which is on the background is not hidden from uh, the foreground and the shelter which is here should hide the background wall or even the tree or even the road sign here should hide the background and that's not the case. In this second video we are going to use Mocha uh, to track the shapes of this road sign here or even this tree here and as you can see if we go through the shot uh, this shape is perfectly tracked on this tree and we have been a also able to track the shape of this shelter here on the front and we have exported that back in After Effects uh, as you can see here uh, this shape appear in white here uh, as a white solid and we can use then this solid as an alpha inverted map maybe on our background wall composition uh, so that it disappears and then the text which is on the background is now hidden from the foreground and we can then play on the opacity of this uh, mocha shape solid uh, to give our shot uh, this nice glassy effect that you can see here maybe some transparency effect and that's what we're going to do just right now so you have to launch Mocha which is provided by default with Adobe After Effects here we're working on Adobe After Effects CS5.5 but this tutorial works with CS5 or even CS4 the first thing you want to do in Mocha is to uh, launch a new project so file here new project here I just want uh, to don't save what I've done before I'm going to import uh, the clip we are using in this tutorial which is a JPEG sequence I remind you you can choose the first frame or choose your own footage if you use your own footage to do this tutorial and click open we're going to make a few adjustments here uh, I'm just going to rename my project because I've already made a few tries before uh, here I really recommend you to change the default folder that Mocha creates for you uh, it means that it creates a result folder right back into your original footage folder and that's not a good way to work I really recommend you to change this folder and maybe to create a Mocha tracks folder just like I did there uh, right into your project folder so that your footage file will be empty and then you can work properly so create a mocha tracks folder hit ok or do uh, this the way you want we're working to work on the entire sequence from frame 0 to frame 737 I remind you that here we're working on a 30 frames per second file so change the frame rate and we're going to adapt the pixel ratio aspect uh, our project file is uh, uh, has got a ratio aspect of 1.00 we don't have any interlaced problem in this project so don't change anything about that but if you use your own footage you maybe want to check which field is used first if it's an interlaced file here we don't have to care about that and we can then hit OK now we are in Mocha and here just a little presentation of uh, how you can navigate in this view if you hit Z on your keyboard and then left click and move your mouse forward or backward you can then zoom in or zoom out and if you hit X you can bring the end tool and then move your frame this will be really useful when we're going to draw shapes of this road sign or even uh, this tree here the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to use the explain layer tool here to draw our shapes and we're going to zoom in to this uh, road sign here and we're going to draw the shape of this road sign really roughly for this example but maybe you can do that uh, more precisely if you want to have a nice uh, 
result at the end. Here I'm not going to do something really, really precise, but you know that if you add some points, you can then uh, draw a nice shape. Uh, to end the creation of uh, your layer, you just have to make a right click. So now you have drawn a shape, but if you go through the shot, you can see that this shape is not tracked on our road sign. And to track this element, uh, you just have to uh, use the track forwards function here and it's going to track this element. Maybe you would like to do that from the first frame uh, at this time and it track forwards. So now Mocha is just tracking for each frame the position of uh, this element here. As you can see he has got blue points uh, um, outside the shape, these are the track points that he's using to make his predictions and um, you could change that in the parameters of your project but the default uh, size of these blue lines is just perfect so maybe you don't have to check that. You can see at the right top corner of your window um, the work in progress. This uh, process is a bit long so I'm just going to switch the record off but don't worry I won't do anything and click anywhere without telling you. So here the track continues and as you can see in a few moments I won't see any more my road signs. So what you can do is click here on stop even if the track is not finished. Uh, and then you can maybe zoom out using the Z key and moving your mouse backwards. Then using the end tool you can uh, center your frame, zoom in a little bit to see what you are doing and then continue your track using the track forwards function here. And that's great because it means that you can stop the work in progress and make some adjustments just like what we're going to see here. As you can see the road sign now uh, is just at the border of the frame and we're going to do that carefully. Maybe you could do that frame by frame. You did the track to next frame function here and once you want left click on that it's just going to process the calculation for the next frame and not for every frame so that you can do that carefully because when the road sign here disappears uh, at the corner of the frame uh, is going to have less and less information doing that so maybe it could make some errors and you would have to make some adjustments and as you can see here maybe I should adjust the shape of my layer and I can do that right now because I have clicked on stop and I can modify the shape of my layer to make maybe it uh, more precise for the borders here even if you we have all we are already hidden by um, the shelter actually uh, we have to do that uh, precisely uh, for this example and then you can then continue your track and at the end you are going to see that uh, the position of the layer has moved as you can see if I go to the previous frame it's here at the bottom and then it goes up. It's not a real problem and then it has, goes, it has gone down. It's not a real problem. We could even, if you want that to disappear completely, you just have to select this part here and then this one and it's going to move just these three points uh, on the timeline. As you can see if I go backwards uh, it has not changed the track uh, and we have uh, make it disappeared. It's now at the bottom right of the frame so we don't see that anymore. I can zoom out. And what you want to do now is to uncheck here the track features function on your layer controls na uh, layer because if you don't uncheck that Mocha is going to continue to try to track it but he won't be able to track it because he won't have any more information. As you can see here the blue lines uh, are completely out of the frames as uh, there are just a few ones in the frame. So you want to uncheck that. Now that you have tracked your road sign you want to track your tree here and we're going to do that the exact same way. You can use the explain layer tool, draw the shape of your tree and then you're going to track that uh, exactly the same way we did for the road sign and for the tree here. You can see that I'm not drawing the exact shape of this tree. Actually I should m zoom in. You can zoom in when you are drawing a layer and I'm just drawing a rough main shape of this tree. I, I don't need to uh, draw the real thing because After Effects can handle these uh, thin lines here uh, with the fusion mode and that's what we're going to see at the end of this video. 
here I have drawn the shape of my tree I should even adjust that a little bit and we're going to track that um, forward and as you can see I've drawn my shape at the frame seven, uh, uh, 73 and I could I should have drawn that at the first frame but it's not a problem if I go through the timeline I can go back here on my keyframe if you don't find your keyframe you know that you're on, on a moment where you have done a modification if you see white points uh, just like this one as you can see if I go to the next frame these points disappear and on the keyframe here they appear so you could maybe track that backwards first so that is going to track the position for the beginning of the shot which would be at frame 0 so going, we're going to use the track backwards function here which works exactly the same way that the tracks forwards forward function so here I've made a really bad shape maybe you should adjust that and if you've done the same thing as me uh, you could maybe add a point to your layer and you can do that using um, this function here uh, the point inter insertion tool uh, using that you can I add a point on your layer and then you can move that using the arrow tool there so you can make uh, a more precise uh, shape and then you can track it backwards so this process is a bit long I'm just going to switch the record off alright now we have tracked our shape for this tree from the beginning to the frame 73 and we would like that to be tracked uh, till it disappears at the right um, corner of the frame so we're going to track it forward and because this is a really sharp shape and rough shape not really precise one it's not going to be really hard for Mocha as you can see to track that so we don't have any problem just switching the record off now you have to click on stop when you see your tree that starts to disappear because it's hidden by this shelter and here we're going to track it anywhere uh, because we don't want that to have an interference uh, then later with our shelter so we're going to do that frame by frame right now you don't worry it won't be uh, too difficult to do that maybe we can adjust the shape of this branch here as you can see once I've done that white points have appeared it means that I've created a keyframe here on the timeline and we're going to track it forward it seems okay at this point as you can see now this line which corresponded at first uh, to uh, our main tree uh, is now uh, uh, eaten by the shelter but it has not a great Im importance uh, right here here we could make, modi make some modification about this tree here and we're going to track that and don't worry about the fact that at the top right corner of your frame um, this seems to be a real mess because we won't see anything about that uh, at 25 frames per second during the animation uh, people just won't see that so but maybe if you want to adjust that really precisely uh, you can but here for some lens reason for this tutorial I'm just going to track that forward do not to see uh, the entire shape and you want that to completely disappear so that it won't hide uh, anything so here you can see that Mocha just couldn't make the track because he had not uh, uh, enough information you can just select all the points here and on this keyframe you just have to m move that uh, forward on the right corner so it's going to maybe make a mess on our animation on our track as you can see here um, the tree seems to be up in the air it means that on this keyframe we just have to move all our points to the position of our tree and then it's going to follow the animation for the rest of uh, the shot it's great you can center your frame and see what it does so now we have tracked our tree and either even our road sign so the tricky part will be for this shelter here but don't worry it will go just fine we are going to see uh, what it happens when the shelter appear here in the, here in the foreground we can see that we've got different steps actually at first we've got this huge uh, window here then we've got this roof which hide the background but here we want the text to still appear in this area 
and so that we're going to draw uh, different shapes actually to create the illusion of this wall shelter we're going to, to draw the shape of this main window here we're going to draw the shape of this roof this window also and of the all these shopping carts here and that will create the illusion of our shelter hiding the background and uh, that will be great so the first thing you want to do is to draw the shape of this left window and to do that maybe you should go at the beginning of the appearance of this window because it's at this right moment that the window is the bigger and that's going to be the technique for every time you have to draw uh, shapes like that you have to select the moment where you see the entire shape so that you can maybe make create enough points here because even if you can add some of these points later uh, using the point insertion function uh, this can be uh, er, a nice uh, way to work so here uh, I'm I know that I'm going to have to add some points later so I'm just going to add them right now and here I've got my shape so I could track that right now but I'd like to go uh, for no I'm going to track that uh, backwards at first so that uh, it's going to go back at the left corner of the frame so use the track backwards function and now Mocha is beginning the process of calculation to track it backwards uh, at the beginning of the shot as you can see we don't have uh, many problems here you have to be careful about this uh, sorry this edge here uh, at the right because uh, this is a real important one and if you want to make that a right corner uh, maybe to be a bit sharper you can right click on this point and go on the point menu, menu here and hit on corner so that is going to make a right angle uh, maybe right here also but it's not really important and continue to track it backwards I'm just going to switch the record off during this process so now you're at the beginning of the shot but as you can see there are there is no more movement but maybe you could track it anyway because as you can see the camera uh, moves up and down just a little bit it's because I've shot that in my car the camera was on the passenger seat and uh, locked on the tripod but because of the engine uh, it had some vibrations on it so maybe you would like to uh, track it anyway go to the first frame and then go at the frame where you have drawn your shape uh, it was for me here uh, the frame uh, 109 and you can maybe zoom out a little bit to see the entire shape so that you can track it uh, nicely and we're going to track it forward right now using the exact same function and if you see any problems you just have to click on stop here make your adjustment like just right here and continue your track anyway so maybe we could even uh, adjust the trash box which will be a tricky part as you will see and continue to track that I'm going to switch the record of while the track is in progress so here we're going to continue the tracking so that you can see um, what problem we're going to have when we're going to go from the outside to the inside of this window and maybe we're going to create another shape uh, I'm going to see what happens and I'm pretty sure that we're going to create a new shape for the inside window and we're going to do as well for the other window on the left because here as you can see we are losing the perspective and now our window is going to be just a scene line uh, and maybe we could adjust uh, our layer while the window is going to go uh, on the inside but I'm going to see what happens maybe here you don't care about what's happening here with this layer because here we're going to create another one at the end uh, for these shopping carts but uh, in our case maybe we could adjust like this way and we're going to then continue our track forward so here obviously we have a problem with this scene line here and we've got to adjust that really precisely because our text is written here if you remember and here as well so we want that to be precise here and we continue the track so make all your adjustments what it that that as you can see here I do have to make a few ones but it's not a real problem don't panic uh, uh, 
Mocha uh, can make errors and you have to tell him how to handle that sometimes just like for this shot and here we can make our adjustments and continue our track alright I've just made a few modifications here as you can see uh, I have just um, taken the shape of this trash box here uh, I've been obliged to track that because it's a really important element uh, for the tracking uh, in our shot later so I have you have to track that sometimes frame by frame and make your adjustments and as you can see here you just have to track the main window there and then when it goes as a scene line at the at the in the middle of the of the shot you just have to track just this scene line this trash box here and this trash box there but don't worry because at the end of the shot we're going to track these shopping carts and even this trash box here so if you had some problems tracking it right now we're going to do that as well later so now that we've got this window which is perfectly tracked from the beginning to the end of the shot we just have to go ahead and track the inside window because as you can see we just have the outside and now we just need the inside part of this window because if we don't do that, if we don't draw the shape here of this part of the frame and the text will appear here on the background and that's not what we want and here actually I'd already done, I've already done that as you can see here there is my layer I'm going to show you exactly what you have to do to track this element uh, properly so that uh, you can do that uh, easily uh, I've just in on that it's here so you can see here that I've started my shape, I've created my shape around the frame 190. Uh, it means that uh, in this particular frame, uh, you can see that the shape is the more complex, is the most complex, and so then I've tracked it backward first, and as you can see, when it becomes a scene line here, in the middle of the frame, I just had to track then this trash box here and this scene line here, and it was not a huge uh, work but you maybe have to do that maybe sometimes frame by frame and then for the next part of the shot I then have tracked the inside window as you can see here and that's what you have to do you have to draw this shape and to track this part of the shelter this inside window till it completely disappears at the right bottom of this uh, uh, frame and now that you have done that, you just do want to do the exact same thing for the roof. For me here, it would be the layer 5. As you can see, I've drawn my shape here around the frame 170 when it's uh, the biggest uh, during the shot. And you can track it backwards. <coughs> Sorry for that. You can tra track it backwards and till it completely disappears at the left of the frame and as you can see it doesn't disappear completely so you have to track that carefully here with these edges then when it goes further in the shot uh, Mocha should track that um, easily but maybe you do have to make some adjustments during the tracking and you have to be careful about this edge here too as you can see here I've made a right angle right clicking on that and then using uh, I actually I could make it smooth here and you can make it a right corner here so that it's going to be more precise and then I've tracked it forward uh, till it completely disappears uh, here uh, at the right corner of the frame now that you have done the roof, you have to do the exact same thing for the left window here that you've done for the first window there because uh, I'm going to show you what happens it's uh, actually exactly the same thing uh, that we've done uh, earlier here we have been obliged to track the inside window and we have started our layer it means that we have created it uh, when the shape was the most complex as you can see here it was around there around the frame 150 and we have drawn the shape we have tracked it backwards till it completely disappears on the left of the frame and then we have tracked it forward here till it completely disappears at the right of the frame and as you can see when it becomes a scene line here uh, we don't want to create two different shapes as we did for the first window and 
so that you can see the different schools uh, that you can use to do uh, these kind of things actually we've used the same layer so when it becomes a thin line here and as you can see there is a, an aberration just right there maybe you should modify that and so once you've done that uh, you can see that then we can go further in the shot and the layer just expand in the other way to hide the in the outside part of the window so that is going to hide what's written on the background here and so now that we have done this left window the roof and this uh, left window this right window and the roof we can now hide the shopping carts here and even this trash box here so I've done that in the layer 7 uh, as you can see I've drawn a shape here and this is the most complex shape that you have to draw uh, in this tutorial uh, to track this shelter this is the tricky part of this tutorial because you're going to have some difficulties to track uh, this trash box here because as you can see if we zoom in uh, <laughs> the um, the the frame uh, the picture is a bit blurry and that doesn't help Mocha to make uh, a good track but once you've done that when you've tracked all the shopping carts from the beginning to the end of the shot you're done with the shelter and because as you can see we've got our roof our left window our right window and even our shopping carts here so um, I tell you the tricky part is this uh, trash box here or but you have to do that frame by frame sometimes and sometimes Mocha can help you and the main purpose of doing that using Mocha is that even if you have the impression that, if that you have to do that frame by frame sometimes the fact is that you don't actually you use the track forwards function all the time and it really uh, brings the work uh, really easily so now that you have done that you have all your shapes you have your tree here I can make it appear again and even the road sign here we're going to export these shapes and actually maybe you would like to exp to track this tree here or even this road sign and this tree here and go at the end of the shot and I know that you've got other trees and this pole here uh, maybe you would like to track them just the exact same way I did here for this road sign this tree and the shelter which was a good way to learn how to create uh, a huge complex shape just like this one and you can see that actually you can draw different shapes uh, to create the illusion of uh, a huge one and so that uh, we're going to export that back in After Effects to do that uh, we're going to select just one of our layers here and we're going to use the export data tool which is right there at the right bottom of your window and we're going to click on export shape so here in the export shape data window you can see that we don't have so many options you can only choose the mocha shape data for after effects and maybe we would like to check that we're going to copy to clipboard for all layers so check the all layers function here and we're going to copy to clipboard our layers and we're going to go back in After Effects to import these layers so here we are back in After Effects in the project we did in the first video and actually you could maybe use your own footage but uh, the first video we used Mbuju to recreate our real footage with the environment and now that we are on our scene and that we've got this huge problem where the text in the background is not hidden from the foreground we're going to create a new solid so right click here and new solid we're going to call that sunny that solid mocha shapes because we're going to give him some mocha shapes information actually you could call that uh, uh, whatever you want we want that to be a white solid a great way to bring the white in After Effects uh, is to use the saturation function here and to bring that to zero so that you've got the perfect white hit OK and we don't care about the size of this comb because we're going to give the size of the layers we've created in Mocha and hit OK so now it appears here on the foreground it's not a problem you're just going to select your layers and your la your mocha shapes layer and hit control V or edit paste actually we're going to hit control V and then you see that um, this layer is going to uh, take the shapes 
of the layer we've drawn in After Effects and I've done that on purpose is here as you can see we could think that there is a huge problem the shapes are not tracked on our road sign or even on the tree and that's just because I've pasted the keys of the layers not at the beginning of the shot as you can see there and I'm at the frame 132 and it means that if I select my mocha shape layer and hit U to bring all the um, keyframes options uh, that are used you can see that my keyframes just doesn't start at the frame 0 but at the frame around 150 and that's bad so I'm just going to hit Ctrl Z to undo what I've done and it means that I'm not going to paste the keys uh, right there so I've cancelled that and now I can go to the first frame actually frame 0 and then hit Control V to paste the layers that we have created in Mocha and now you can see that the shapes just fits perfectly to the environment and if we go through the shot you can see then that the track is perfect and that's because Mocha has done its work uh, pretty well and now <coughs> we still have a problem we've got this really awful shape which is here on the foreground and the best way to hide the background to do that is to select here our background wall and don't care about the fact that here that it's already on alpha inverted mat it's because I've made a try it before uh, for you it will be unknown here on the track mat modes and to bring that up actually you just have to hit F4 so that you reveal the fusion modes and even the track mat and select your background wall uh, and your smoka shape so you do have to be above that and you're going to use this solid as an alpha inverted mat just as I tell you since the beginning of this tutorial and now you can see that the background is hidden from the foreground and it means that we have completely solved our problems because now we've got our 3D environment the text is perfectly tracked on the background wall or even on the floor and I remind you that we have done that for the entire shot it just means that you do have to uh, do the exact same thing that we did for this text here or uh, even for this text on the background wall to go through the shot and do that on the entire timeline using all these null objects that we've imported from Buju and even the shapes that you're going to track I mean uh, you have to track this tree here on this pole this tree is right there to the end of the shot to create a great depth of field uh, effect but the tricky part of this shot was this shelter I didn't do that for any reason it was a great uh, way to learn how to use Mocha to track shapes uh, on the foreground trying to hide the background and so that now you have solved completely your problem and you can then play <coughs> on the compositing of your shot it means that maybe you could uh, make things um, you could combine things maybe a bit better and by that I mean that you can play on the opacity of your mocha shape solid maybe to show you an example I will be bring that up to 50 percent so that now you can see that we've got some kind of transparency here because this roof of the shelter here is some kind of glass material maybe you would like the opacity to be like 85 percent and so that we've got this real nice glassy effect this transparency effect actually uh, when the text is not completely hidden but still a little bit and then in the center of the shelter here you can see that we've got this hole and the text still appears here and that's a good way to make things fit a bit better uh, in your shot and you can even play on the opacity of the different elements and if you go to the mocha shapes effects control here you can see that you've got each layer which is represented one by one and you can even play on the opacity for each one and if you do remember we remember that <coughs> the roof here was the layer uh, 5 if I remember that so maybe we could play on the opacity for this one we could uh, change that so it's going to change the appearance of the text that appear here without changing the transparency effect of this window it means that you can play on that uh, to give uh, some great um, um, 
effects to your shot and then you can even play on your background wall composition you could play on the opacity uh, of this one too so that the text maybe fit better to the wall here so you can break that maybe to 90 percent and you could even uh, work with the different fusion modes that you have and it's going to be useful if you use different colors uh, to make them feel a little bit better uh, on your shot here obviously we are working on a black color which is not a color actually but if you go in your background wall composition and maybe then change the color of your text uh, using <coughs> some nice red color that you could see uh, really well in your final composition. I'm going to lock that and bring my background wall comp here, drag it on the left so that I can see real time what I'm doing on my layer or even on my final composition here. And then you can maybe play on the different fusion modes that you've got uh, in your final compositions. Uh, like that, you have the classic color burn, which is a great one to make uh, things uh, fit uh, on your wall. And so that, the only imagination, is the only limit is your imagination, and then you can just play on that. So we are done for this second video, because we have completely represented our 3D environment, first in the first video using Buju, and then using Mocha. Uh, we have created these 2D shapes, we have tracked them uh, when they appear in the frame, in the field of the frame, and then uh, we have exported them back in After Effects to use them in one solid. We have pasted the parameters of each layer here, and we have used this solid as an alpha inverted mat on the comp we wanted to hide. And I can tell you that here for the floor, you do have maybe <coughs> to use the same alpha inverted mat you used for the background wall and to do that you just have to uh, select your mocha shapes layer and duplicate it you can do that by hitting ctrl D or edit duplicate and then you can bring that above your floor plane and select your floor plane and use your mocha shapes solid number 2 as an alpha inverted mat as well and so that you can see here in my final composition that the text which is written on the floor is now hidden uh, by the trash box that um, appears here uh, on the frame. So that's great, that's the end of this second video, I hope you enjoyed that. And now we're going in the third video to include some great elements on the background wall. We're going to draw flourish design elements in Adobe Illustrator and then we're going to animate them back in After Effects to include them on our background wall or even on the floor throughout the shot so that we're going to be able to uh, give our shot some great decorative elements on the background wall. But for the 3D creation, it's over. I hope you enjoyed that, so go on the third video. And if you like this video, of course, I recommend you to click on like on YouTube and maybe to write me the comments uh, to tell me that this tutorial is great or maybe if you didn't like it, to tell me uh, so that I can maybe improve my skills to make tutorials. Thank you very much, bye, and go on the third video to end the creation of your nice decorative design elements.